Hello, friends. Nice to see you again. Today we'll talk about beauty. 今天我们要谈论美 First, let's look at a picture. 这是十五世纪意大利画家菲利普·利皮的代表作，题目叫《Madonna and Child》，圣母玛利亚和孩子。画中圣母玛利亚的形象。天真柔和，非常美丽。看到这样美丽的画面，你也许会产生遐想。那么，你会遐想到什么呢 ？Now, let's listen to the text and then answer this question. What do glimpses of beauty, either in nature or art, often suggest? To the human mind, 当我们看到自然界或是艺术的美的时候，通常会遐想到什么呢 ？A young man sees a sunset, and unable to understand or to express the emotion that it rouses in him, concludes that it must be the gateway to a world that lies beyond. It is difficult for any of us, in moments of intense aesthetic experience. To resist the suggestion that we are catching a glimpse of a light that shines down to us from a different realm of existence, different and because the experience is intensely moving in some way higher. And though the gleams blind and dazzle, yet do they convey a hint of beauty and serenity greater than we have known or imagined, greater too than we can describe, for language. Which was invented to convey the meanings of this world cannot readily be fitted to the uses of another. That all great art has this power of suggesting a world beyond is undeniable. In some moods, nature shares it. There is no sky in June so blue that it does not point forward to a bluer. No sunset so beautiful that it does not waken the vision of a greater beauty. A vision which passes before it is fully glimpsed, and in passing leaves an indefinable longing and regret. But if this world is not merely a bad joke, like a vulgar flare amid the cool radiance of the stars, and existence an empty laugh braying across the mysteries, if these imitations of a something behind and beyond are not evil humour born of indigestion, or whimsies. Sent by the devil to mock and madden us, if, in a word, beauty means something, yet we must not seek to interpret the meaning. If we glimpse the unutterable, it is unwise to try to utter it. Nor should we seek to invest with significance that which we cannot grasp. Beauty, in terms of our human meanings, is meaningless. 好，刚才的问题是。What do glimpses of beauty, either in nature or art, often suggest to the human mind? 回答应该是 Such glimpses often suggest a different realm of existence, another world, somewhere better than this world, which is impossible to describe. 我们会遐想到另外一个世界。一个难以用语言形容的、比我们的世界更加美好的地方。Right, you've got it. 回答正确。好，现在我们来看一下整篇课文的内容。这是一篇议论文，中心论点是：不要试图去解释美，即使解释了也毫无意义。中心论点呢，在文章的最后点名。课文一共有两段，第一段讲美往往难以用语言表达。Sometimes beauty defies description. 比如，年轻人无法用语言表达晚霞的美，便遐想那是通往另一个世界的大门。同样，当人们强烈的感受到美的时候，也往往无法表述而产生遐想。第二段。点名中心论点：不要试图去解释美
we must not seek to interpret the meaning of beauty. 因为有时美只可意会，不可言传。再说，对于美，我们不一定都能理解。Beauty is something unutterable and something we can't grasp. 在语言上。这篇课文当中，我们要注意观察几个排比句的运用，另外要感受到文章那种诗的节奏感和美感。好，了解了课文大意，再来学习重要语言点。So let's move on to language points. 好，先看课文的题目 ，beauty， 意思是。The quality of being beautiful and very good to look at. 美。这篇文章并不是讲什么是美，而是讲不要试图去解释美，即使解释了也毫无意义，因为一有些美难以用语言形容，是只可意会不可言传。第二个原因是。对于一些美的事情，我们不一定都能理解。好，那么从美学上讲，作者的这个观点似乎是形式派的主张。他们认为形式比内容重要。比如，如果美丽的落日能使人联想到更加绚丽的景象，从而给人们带来激情或者快感，这就是美。印象派绘画大师如莫奈、梵高，都是这一派的代表人物。根据作者的观点，看他们的话，最好不要问有什么意义或者有什么高深的思想。That is to say, try not to interpret the meaning of their paintings. 啊、uh, ，beauty， 我们来看一个例句。Beauty。Is in the eye of the beholder. 情人眼里出西施。好，我们再来看下一个语言点。It is difficult for any of us, in moments of intense aesthetic experience, to resist the suggestion that we are catching a glimpse of a light that shines down to us. From a different realm of existence, different, and because the experience is intensely moving, in some way higher. Aesthetic, 意思是 connected with beauty and study of beauty, 审美的，也可以拼作 e s t h e t i c. In moments of intense aesthetic experience, 意思是，在强烈感受到美的时刻。这句话主要讲美，往往难以用语言来形容。Beauty defies description. 比如看到落日，人们无法理解和表达，因此呢，就遐想到从天国射向我们的一线光芒。由于这种美感如此强烈，这使我们觉得天国也许比我们的世界更好。Aesthetic， 我们来看一例句。From aesthetic point of view, this painting is very good. 从审美角度看，这幅绘画非常好。好，再来看下一个原点。Though the gleams blind and dazzle, yet do they convey a hint of beauty and serenity greater than we have known or imagined. Serenity. 意思是 a feeling of being calm and peaceful. 静谧 A hint of beauty. And serenity, 美感和静谧的启示。这句话讲，看见落日，产生遐想而带来的美感
，虽然光芒令人眼花缭乱，但确实它能给我们一种不曾经历过的和无法想象的美感和静谧的启示。作者说这句话的目的，在于表达美是无法理解。和难以用语言形容的，所以呢，人们只能够遐想。Serenity， 我们来看一个例句。The noises of cars passing by disturb the serenity of the neighborhood. 路过车辆的噪音打破了居民区的宁静。好，再来看下一个例句。No sunset so beautiful that it does not waken the vision of a greater beauty, a vision which passes before it is fully glimpsed, and in passing leaves an indefinable longing and regret. Longing, a strong feeling of wanting something, 渴望的意思。An indefinable longing. 意思是不可名状的渴望。这句话主要讲美的事情往往一闪即逝，让人无法理解。比如美丽的落日，总能让人遐想到一个更加绚烂的景象，但是还没等我们饱览够，这景象就消失了，给人留下。不可名状的渴望和惆怅。Longing， 我们来看一例句。In times of stress and worry, I often experience an almost indefinable longing for my childhood. 当我悲伤忧愁的时候，常常对孩提时代产生一种不可言状的渴望。好，下一个原点。If this world is not merely a bad joke, life a vulgar flare amid the cool radiance of the stars, an existence an empty laugh braying across the mysteries. Bray， 意思是 talk or laugh。In a loud, annoying way, like the sound that a donkey makes. 以显而出的声音说话或者笑，发出像驴叫似的声音。An empty laugh, braying across the mysteries. 意思是，对神秘事物发出的空虚的笑声。这句话。表达了作者对世界、人生以及生活的看法。在他看来，这个世界是个拙劣的恶作剧 ，a bad joke。人生是平凡而短暂的，生活呢是空虚的。作者说这句话是为了下一句做铺垫的。既然这些都是这样的，那么美也是没有意义的。所以，我们不要去阐明它的意义。Bray， 我们来看一个例句。If a donkey brays, it makes a loud sound. 驴叫的时候会发出很大的声音。好，下一个语言点。If we glimpse the unutterable, it is unwise to utter it. Nor should we seek to invest with significance that which we can't grasp. Invest with. To give something a particular quality. 赋予什么什么以特殊的品质的意思 Invest with significance that which we can't grasp. 正常的语序应该是 invest that which we can't grasp with significance. 
，意思是赋予我们无法理解的事物重要的意义。这句话的意思是说，如果我们看见只可意会不可言传的事物的时候，就不要说出来。对我们不理解的事物，也不要赋予它任何意义。Invest with 是一个正式用语。我们来看两个例句。Nature has invested animals with a capacity for not showing fear. 自然赋予了动物不畏惧的能力。As a writer, he is constantly trying to invest with significance. The minor events in our lives. 作为一个作家，他总是设法赋予生活中的一些小事儿以重要意义。Okay, so much for the language points. Now let's move on to key structures. 在关键句型里面，我们首先来看课文中多处排比句。这些排比句在内容上来说呢，有些晦涩难懂。但从形式上来看，却是有非常强烈的节奏感和美感。啊，我们来看一下。There's no sky in June so blue that it does not point forward to a bluer. No sunset so beautiful that it does not awaken the vision of a greater beauty. 六月蔚蓝的天空。总能使人遥想更加蔚蓝的苍穹，美丽的落日总能使人幻想一个更加绚烂的景象。这句里面省略了 “there is”， 作者在这里重复使用了 “there is” 的句型，同时也重复使用了 “so that” 和 “so that”。这种排比使这个句子有非常强烈的节奏感，也非常美。那再来看下一句 ：If this world is not merely a bad joke, life a vulgar flare amid the cool radiance of the stars, and existence an empty laugh braying across the mysteries. If these imitations of something behind and beyond are not evil humor born of indigestion, or whimsies sent by the devil to mock and madden us, if, in a word, beauty means something, yet we must not seek to interpret the meaning. If we glimpse the unutterable, it is unwise to try to utter it. Nor should we seek to invest with significance that which we can't grasp. 在这段里面，作者重复使用了四个 if。这四个 if 意义呢是层层的深入。前面两个 if 引起的句子起到铺垫的作用，最后两个 if 引起的句子。才是作者真正想表达的思想，也就是这两个 if。从这两句中，我们知道作者想表达的思想就是 ：We should not utter something that is unutterable, and we should not invest something we can't grasp with significance。好，我们再来看下面一句。It is difficult to any of us in moments of intense ecstatic experience to resist the suggestion that we are catching a glimpse of light that shines down to us from a different realm of existence. Different, and because the experience is intensely moving, in some way higher. 在这一句里面。作者重复使用了 “different” 这个词汇。那么 “different” 在这儿起到语篇纽带的作用
，使前后句子呢更有逻辑的连在一起。更重要的是，在意义上，表示思路呢又进一步深入，意义向更深层次发展。也就是说，光芒从一个不同的世界射向我们，不同，那是因为这种美感很强烈。从某种意义上说，更高级。好，下一句子。No sunset so beautiful that it does not waken the vision of a greater beauty, a vision which passes before it is fully glimpsed, and in passing leaves an indefinable longing and regret. 和前一句一样，作者在这儿也用了一个词汇重复的手段，来起到相同的作用。Vision, 也就是说，落日如此美丽，以至于总能引起一个更加绚烂的景象。这个景象还没看够，就瞬息即逝。好，正如作者所说的那样，美有时候真的是难以解释清楚，因为情人眼里出西施。Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 可是，有时候美也很具体，很好解释。比如，美就是真，真就是美。Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.